Hey everybody, this is a video on how to load in sample data sets to Python. Uh, I just did one on how to load in data sets to um, MATLAB, which was actually, I, I had uh, admittedly not been aware that they were available in MATLAB. It makes complete sense that they are, but I just had not encountered them. I knew that Python had it, I knew R had it in particular, um, but uh, now I'm on the hunt to uh, produce a video just how to load these in into the different uh, programming languages. So in MATLAB, it was, uh, you know, every library or every toolbox is kind of readily available for you. And I think you had to have the statistics uh, toolbox in particular for MATLAB. For Python, uh, you'll have to use, uh, at, as far as I'm, I'm, I'm able to see, one of two libraries to load these in. Uh, there, I, I did see a few other ways uh, that were some uh, slightly less well-known libraries. Uh, one allowed you to access R data sets uh, in particular, but I'm going to focus on uh, two that are a little bit more common. Uh, so we're going to use Seaborn uh, to load in data sets first. And Seaborn, if you're not familiar, is a kind of a plotting library. It allows you to do some very intricate plots uh, for your data. And to me, that makes sense that Seaborn would have some sample data sets because it would allow you to load in data and practice their plotting with it rather than have you have to focus on um, finding a data set, saving it to a folder, figuring out how to load it in from that folder, formatting in the way that Seaborn needs, etc. They're just going to have data set ready that's formatted, ready and waiting, and you pull it directly in. So our first step here, we're going to load in Seaborn, and we name it SNS. That's kind of convention. Uh, everyone seems to name it that way, so I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to use the function load underscore data set. Within this, you'll pull uh, the name of the uh, data set, which is Iris in this case. I'm using Iris because everyone's familiar with it, and this is available in almost every language, or uh, you know, this, this data set's available ev everywhere. There is a much larger list than this. Uh, I'd suggest just Googling Seaborn sample data sets to get the full list. I haven't been able to find a function that will print it out for you. And unfortunately, I haven't found autocomplete uh, for this type of uh, loading in either. Um, on that note, I will mention that Seaborn, the loading aspect of it is not ideal because you're having to type in text here, uh, whereas Scikit-Learn has this lovely uh, aspect here that we'll get to that it even can autocomplete for you. Uh, however, it, Seaborn does have a nice little um, benefit to it. So I'm going to go ahead and load in Iris here. Once I have that, I've saved it to the Iris variable. I can call iris.columns and it will give me all the column names. Uh, the reason I can call dot columns is because of the type of um, data format it loaded it in, uh, loaded the data in as. So if I click type and, and select iris, it will tell me that it is a data frame. Uh, it's a pandas data frame. Uh, pandas, in my opinion, is the easiest, most comprehensible way to view and play with your data. It's essentially more or less an Excel CSV file. Um, Everything's kind of collected. It has a lot of neat aspects that allows you to access things in certain ways, uh, change things in certain ways. Most machine learning algorithms, most uh, neural net stuff, most um, you know statistics, everything will allow you to access data frames or load in data frames. So it's very useful in that sense. And it's nice in the sense that when I load it in, that's what I get. I get a data frame. I can also see the data. You just click dot head and you don't even have to say 10, I can leave it blank, and it will give me five, but if you want to designate how many rows you're seeing, uh, it will pull it up. So you'll see zero through four, that's five rows. If I put 10, you see zero through nine, and you see all of the column names, you see all of the rows are different values or different uh, uh, entities, so that actually loads in directly for us. Very easy to use. Uh, the only downside in my mind is that you're writing in a text input here, which can be a little bit annoying at times. Uh, the other way I found to do this is use scikit-learn, which is kind of like Python's science-focused um, uh, kind of, I'll say machine learning, no, I don't know if machine learning would be appropriate here, kind of science-focused toolbox, I'll say. So it would make sense, again, that this would have some uh, data sets for you to practice algorithms on or whatever it might be. There's this nice website, which is their documentation website. If we go to it, it will actually give you first the list of data sets available here, and then it actually gives you information about them. And this is 
uh, the easiest access to information on data sets that I've found. Uh, everything else, I, you can Google the data set and usually you can find it somewhere, but it might take a minute or two to find it. Uh, this is immediately, it is up and ready for you. Uh, and again, there may be another way to access this information. I just haven't found it yet. So, you know, if it's there, let me know. I'm happy to, to share that. But uh, as far as I know, Google's your best bet. Um, so here it actually tells you what each of the columns are, you know, what, what they represent and potentially what um, type of data it is. So uh, we're going to load in sklearn, which is scikit-learn.datasets. There we go. And here you just go sklearn.datasets.loadiris. And load iris in this case is uh, the iris toolbox. However, if you click tab here, you can actually see them all pop up. So you'll actually get an autocomplete function, which is very, very helpful. Uh, next, I actually want to see what kind of type this is. Is it a data frame? In this case, it's not. It's, it's what's called a bunch. Uh, sometimes, some groups call it data bunch or something like that. Um, data bunches are very uh, useful in their own sense, uh, but I think to me they're less um, comprehensible or, or intuitive, uh, I guess I'll say. Uh, but they have some nice aspects. So we can say iris2 is you know, what I save the data as, dot data, and it'll actually print out the data for you. Uh, you'll notice that the it's an array, and each array is basically a row, um, and each row has um, four values here, um, and actually uh, potentially each several columns, but there are four four values in each column. Um, because of that, to access those, you put in a little bit extra work. Um, figuring all that out. It's not terrible at all, but um, it's not as direct as a data frame is. Uh, the other thing aside from dot data, you also have dot feature names, and that's just the column names. So again, fairly straightforward. It gives you the same information that you need. Um, it's very useful. I think bunches actually can can be input into various sklearn uh, functions or sklearn objects potentially. Uh, very directly, but I don't like dealing with them personally just because I'm more familiar with the data frame. So if that's the route you want to go, uh, you can actually just import pandas here, and then we can create a data frame. So we just do pd, which is the name of pandas. We just renamed it as pd. You don't have to do that, but you can. It's very conventional, so it's it's common. And then you just do dot data frame. This will create your data frame. Um, your, your data frame and then we have to designate what is the data and what are the columns or the variables so data will be the iris2 dot data which is this group here and the columns will be the iris2 dot feature names which is this group here and then once I do that I can call dot head and it will print it out for me and again we got the same information so neither of these is too difficult I mean we're looking at one two three four well, we got one, two, and three. Three lines of code to get your data frame here. And here you have one, and that's pretty much it. So <laughs> neither one of these is bad. Um, it, but, but it gives you access to these data frames already formatted, already what you need, uh, lets you play with either plotting features, algorithms, machine learners, whatever it is, with a very simple, well-known data set, you don't have to really spend all the time reformatting or learning the data set. You can spend most of that time focusing on what the algorithm does, what the plotting mechanisms are, what's the best way to view it, what's the best way to process it, what's the best way to, you know, what's the best filter to use on it, whatever it is. Um, as far as learning goes, I think it's a fantastic tool. Uh, I do hope this was helpful. Um, I will be putting up another one on how to load in similar data sets to R, and so that way you have you can play around in MATLAB, you can play around in Python, and you can play around in R uh, with similar data sets. Uh, you can see how each uh, language does the same utilities. Um, if you guys have any requests, go ahead and email me or uh, shoot, write it in a comment or something, and I'll happily spend some time putting together something useful. Anyway, I hope that was helpful.